This video forms part of a larger series of videos which walk you through how to use Zotero to manage your library and your references in Microsoft Word. Links to the rest of the videos in this series are placed in the description below. In this video, I'm going to show you how to add files to your Zotero library. And before I show you how to do that, it's important that we distinguish between an actual reference and the file that accompanies the reference. When you use Zotero to reference in Word, what Word needs is just for the actual reference to be in Zotero. If you want to use Zotero to manage your library, it is beneficial to not only add the references, but also add files to those references. Although we won't always be able to add files to the references. In the case of a hard copy book, for instance, you cannot actually insert the book into Zotero. You can only add the reference for the book. And the same goes for a website, for instance. But if you have a journal article or you have a working paper, it's beneficial to add it to your Zotero library so that all your documents are in one place and you can find them using the search capabilities of Zotero. So the first thing I'm going to show you is how to add a reference to Zotero when you do actually have the PDF file available. So there's a button here to add files. It's this little green button called new item. If you click on the arrow, you'll see that there are options to add various types of documents to the library. So you can add your files in one of two ways. The first way that you can add a file is to add a link to a file. Suppose you have a document on your computer that you want to access in Zotero, but you don't actually want it to take up any storage in Zotero, then you would use the link to file option. What this means is that you'll be able to access the document using the desktop app, but you won't necessarily be able to access this document on the web app. The benefit of doing this is that the physical document won't add to the limited storage you have available in your Zotero account. The drawback of this is if the item moves on your computer, Zotero might not be able to find it if it only has a link to a particular folder. The second option you can use here is to store a copy of the file. What this means is that you're saving the reference and the actual document to Zotero and Zotero syncs not only the reference but also the document to the online library. This means that you can then open the document in your online library as well as on your desktop app. So I'm going to add two files just to show you what the implications are of each of these. So I'm first going to say link to file. It'll open your folders. I've already put all my documents into one folder and I'm just going to upload the first article as a link to the file. What this means is that the PDF file remains on my computer and the reference goes to my online library without the PDF file. And I just want to show you what this looks like when I go to my actual Zotero library. Making sure that the document has in fact synced to my online library, I can now go to my online library, click refresh, and then I should see this item in my library over here. But instead of a PDF icon, I have a link icon. That means that although the reference is now stored in my online library, the actual file that goes along with the reference, the PDF document is not stored in my online library. It simply remains on my computer. But I can still open the PDF file within my desktop app. The second option you have here is to store a copy of the file. I'm going to add my second article as a copy. This means that not only am I uploading the actual reference to my online library, I'm also uploading the PDF document to my online library. And that means that it's going to take up space in my Zotero repository. Again, checking that this has synced, I can now go back to my, my online library, click refresh, and you'll see here that it actually has a copy of the file and it looks different from the file that only has the link. If I double click on this, it should then open up the PDF document that I've uploaded.
Going back to my online library, what I'd want to do now is to make sure that the metadata for these articles are correct. And if I want to open up a file, I can just double click on it and Zotero will open the PDF that I just uploaded, whether it's just pointing to it as a link or whether I've actually uploaded it as a copy of the actual file, doesn't matter. I'll still be able to open the PDF document within my desktop app. So on the right hand side here, where we had no information just now, we now have a lot of information. And this information is very important because this information is going to determine what comes out in your reference list when you reference this document in your Word document. If there's a mistake here, it means that it's gonna come out incorrectly in your Word document. So the first thing you need to make sure is that the item type matches the actual document. So if this is not a journal article, then you would need to actually choose a different option over here. The reason why this is important is because different types of documents are referenced differently within the bibliography. So if you have a book and it's characterized as a journal article here, it means that the book is going to come out like the journal article where you need the volume, the issue, the page number. And because you won't have that information for a book, it means that those items are going to look like they are missing from your reference list. So you have to make sure that the item type is correct so that Word knows how to reference the document within your actual bibliography. The second thing is the title. If the title is incorrect, you can just edit it by clicking on it. And then the third thing is the author. So usually you can add it as a, a surname name in a surname name format as it is here. Or you can click on this little box which makes it switch to a single field, in which case it will combine the name and the surname instead of separating them into different boxes as they were earlier. This is useful, especially when you are referencing organizations and you don't want it to come out as a, as a, a name surname format. So for instance, if you are referencing UN women, you don't want it to come out as woman slash UN. You want it to come out as UN woman. In that case, you'll use the single field author. If you have a name and a surname to put in, you can switch to two fields. This ensures that you don't actually make an error when you add the name and you add the surname. Um, sometimes Zotero can actually also confuse second names for a surname or confuse a second part of a surname for a second name, for instance. If I'm citing a human being, I use the, the two fields option. If you need to add more authors, you can use the plus button here. If you need to remove an author, you can click the minus button. So Tero has also picked up the abstract from this article. If you think about what it is that you need for your actual reference list, an abstract is not necessary. So you don't need an abstract to be completed here, but because Word won't need an abstract for the reference list, it won't come out on the reference list, so you can leave it here. Important when citing a journal article is making sure that the publication is there and it's been captured correctly. You need the volume, the issue, the pages, and then you need the date. And depending on which reference style you're using, you might need the DOI or the URL. Basically, you can fill out as many details as possible here, but what's important to think about is what do you actually need for a complete reference list. If there is something here that you won't need for your reference list, then don't bother trying to figure out what it is. I'm just going to open the second document. This is a useful exercise to go through as you add references to your document. Just double check that the metadata is correct because if you don't do this at the beginning, you're gonna need to do it at the end somewhere and you'll still need to manually go through these references to make sure that all the details are correct. Otherwise, they won't come out correctly in your reference list. So this is basically the process you follow when you need to add a PDF document to your Zotero library. Sometimes you don't have an electronic copy of a item available. Perhaps you only have the hard copy, like in the case of having a physical book. If you have a physical book, you cannot drag and drop it into your Zotero library. You would then need to add the reference manually. To do that, you're going to click on the new item button and I am adding a book. So I'm going to click on book 
And what that will do is it creates an item with no information here. And just FYI, Zotero calls these parent items. A parent item can have more than one attachment to it. So if you want to see the attachments to a parent item, you can click on the little arrow next to it. Um, in this case, the only attachment here is the link to the article. In the case of this article, I have the actual PDF document saved in the Zotero library. This parent item doesn't have any items within it because I don't actually have anything attached to this particular reference, but I am going to fill out some information so that I am able to reference this item in my Word document. So the first thing I'm going to do is make sure that book is correctly chosen, and then I'm going to add the title of the book. These are basically all the details that I'll need in order to reference a book in my document. Another manual reference to show is when you need to actually add a book chapter rather than the entire book. In this case, you will then add it as a book section rather than as a book. When adding a book section, it's important to note that you're working with two sets of information. You're working with two titles as well as two different sets of people who are involved with this book section. So the first title you would need is the title of the actual chapter within the book. The second title you will need is the title of the actual book, so the title that is on the cover of the book. The first set of authors you will need is the authors of the chapter, and the second set of names you will need is the editors of the book, so the, the names that appear on the cover. If you are citing a book section, the main title that you need to add for your reference is the title of the chapter. The authors you're going to add are the authors of the chapter. The next set of titles and authors need to go in a different place. So now I've added the title of the chapter as well as the authors of the chapter. What I'm going to do now is add the book title as well as the editors of the book. To add the editor of the book, I'm going to use the same option I used to add the authors, but I'm going to change the role of the person to an editor. Beyond that, I can now add the normal details that I would have ordinarily added for a book. The pages that I would need to put in here would be the pages for the chapter. So if someone looks at this, they need to know on which page will they find the chapter's beginning and end. So the very last option that I want to show you when adding manual references is using the identifier to find a reference. So if you have an ISBN number for a book, for instance, instead of adding it manually like I just did, this identifier allows you to find the reference by using the ISBN number. So even when using the ISBN number, you'll need to make sure that the metadata has been captured correctly. I'm just going to update this accordingly to make sure that all the details are correct. Important to note here is that you would have seen that I changed the information that was all caps. If you leave it as all caps here, it's going to come out as all caps in your reference list. You don't want that to happen. What's also important is that you need to make sure that the authors are 
inserted in the correct order because Zotero won't be able to distinguish between the first, the second, the third, or the whatever the author. So you need to make sure that you put them in in the correct order. Another type of document in inverted commas that you can add to your Zotero library is actually standalone notes. This is useful, for instance, if you are doing field work and you don't want to have your field work notes laying around all over the place. What you can do then is you can add a standalone note and this pane on the right hand side will then open up a space where you can basically type your notes. I'm going to use it as if I'm using it to add field work notes and just add random information to it basically. What Sotero does with this is it creates a separate item for it in your library that can exist alongside your actual references. In the next video, I'll show you some strategies you can use for organizing your library.